So, Kolarov and Ivanovic, two good mates. They're both Serbian internationals, although there was a, an incident in a community shield between the two, which led to Ivanovic being sent off a few years ago. But as you can see, they've long since made up. There's the player that's disappointed in recent times. Edin Hazard needs to get his game back on top form. Struggle to go past players, struggle to score goals. It's been a real disappointment. Well, it doesn't look like Manchester City in terms of strip, and it doesn't look like Manchester City in terms of personnel. But away they go, playing for a place here in the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. Zabaleta with the header, and Mikel. He tasted defeat under Hiddink's management for the first time, despite scoring in Paris in midweek. He was a stalwart of Bruce Hiddink's first spell here, which did end with the FA Cup triumph of 2009. Hazard. Now William. Chelsea last won the trophy in 2012, but in the following two seasons were knocked out each time by Manchester City. There's a player that's been in tremendous form, William, even against PSG. He gave Verratti and Thiago Motta a really hard time when he started running with the ball. Looks as though Chelsea are going to try and press high up the field to stop Man City playing out from the back. Figueiredo is going to have to go long with this first kick. Well, he hates missing out, and he's still one appearance away from 700 for Chelsea. And of course, he's made it public that Chelsea haven't as yet, and maybe will not offer a new contract for next season. And the captain leader legend, as the banner always states here, John Terry is to the supporters. Not quite to the ownership at the moment. The yo yo had to knock it long. So it's Gary Cahill and Branislav Ivanovic as the central defensive pairing. Baba Rahman at left back and Cesar Aspilaqueta is pushed forward here ahead of Fabregas. He's playing in his natural position of right back, which he hasn't been able to occupy too often because Ivanovic has been out there. It's been Terry and Zuma, centre of the defence mostly, both of them injured. Zuma for a long time, sadly. Hazard, trying to link with Costa, made by Manu Garcia. And then Alish Garcia playing his part as well. They're two Spaniards, but not related. Garcia, a very common name in Spain. And here is Fapala. This could be a sensational start for the forward who's just turned 19 from France. Nicely to Fernando. Back from Kolarov to Demichelis. What a good bit of play it was for, by Falpala. Sorry, playing the European Championships at junior level. Certainly is a real talent. Plenty of pace. He's got a bit of trickery as well. Fabregas. done by Kolarov. There's no manual Pellegrini just said, go on, go out and express yourselves and see where that takes us. Kolarov loves to get forward, of course. Salina towards Ricky Nacho. He scored three at Aston Villa in the last round. Draw hasn't been too kind to City, has it, Stuart? Because they were away to Norwich, Premier League team. Away to Villa. Back pass for Caballero to deal with it, but he did deal with it. And now away to Chelsea. Yeah, it's been difficult for them. What well, was a good sign there? Donovan de Yoyo looks as though he's got real pace to send her back up against Diego Costa. The ball was played over the top, and we've seen in recent times that Diego Costa has looked a lot quicker and a lot sharper. It's good from the centre back. That's good work there from Alish uh, 
Garcia too, and the pass. Not quite linking up with the Fapala that time. And French international. And they are going to play with two up front. It does mean there's going to be a lot of pressure on Garcia and Fernando in that central midfield area. Yes, Garcia has started the game well. He's played round pressure. Good moment this was. Miscontrols the ball there, just sends Cahill the wrong way, chops it back across him. A little nutmeg there, tries to go in at the near post. Courtois was ready for it. It's also a good height for the goalkeeper. Fabregas. That's for the Costa has been masked up recently because of facial injuries. And, uh, several other Chelsea players in uh, recent months as well. Of course, they didn't call him a team of Zorros. Going back to Aspili I thought he had a great game against PSG. He was often outnumbered. That's the right back. Pedro tried to work hard with him. I thought that Hiddink would bring back Matic into the team for this match. Fabregas defended poorly against PSG. As Pedro trying to do a bit of defending from the front over on that far side. Matipo Courtois. Making sure he kept his distance from Ivanovic. William. Rain over the weekend here in the London area. Premier League pitches train so well these days. It's quite a mild afternoon. A bit premature to say a hint of spring, but we're all hoping. Nicky Nacho. Nah, Fabregas, sorry, Stuart. Front two trying to link up with each other. It's a good ball played in by Zabaleta to start with. Here. Nacho looking to run in behind. It's a good start by Man City. Just spun to stay in for Azar. William. Same team, but very different circumstances for Chelsea. It's a Tuesday night where they were on the back foot for much of the evening. Defended pretty purposefully. Not so purposeful there from. Uh, Ivanovic in the first place, and Cahill says, well, I'll knock it to where they can't score. But at the moment, they're trying to attack down this right-hand side. Chelsea's left, Baba Rahman loves to get forward. There's been a couple of times where he's been caught high up the field. The ball's been played in behind him. Ivanovic has had to come across and defend big areas. Zabaleta played a brilliant ball down the line not so long ago. Zabaleta uh, was a substitute when they won the Cup in 2011, and then sent off in the FA Cup final. Only a, a small but far from a notable list of players who've had red cards on the big day. And they lost to Wigan, of course, which was a real shock. End of the Roberto Mancini reign. I think he already knew he was going before that game, didn't he, Roberto Marcini, uh, Mancini? And Pellegrini has been knowing he's going at the end of the season for a while and it hasn't helped City to very good results losing it home to Leicester and then Tottenham to be fair two teams above them in the Premier League back to back home defeats for the first time for over seven years in league games Figueroa is being asked to swing that left boot a bit more often than he wants in these early minutes doesn't look comfortable on his left side seems he actually took his touch onto his left foot and looked uncomfortable, shipping it straight into touch. Cahill may have a problem here. Miazga is on the bench. 20-year-old mm. Matt Miazga, signed from New York Red Bulls in the January transfer window. Really one for the future, but his future might be uh, the debut in the next couple of minutes. He's getting ready. Once for 
the USA at senior level. The medical men, who uh, neither of whom started the season doing the jobs that they're doing now, as uh, I'm sure you'll remember from the contretemps between uh, Jose Mourinho and uh, the then first team physio and doctor. At the start of the campaign here. A bad omen for the great manager. Pavarapa. Interesting news from uh, Milan this morning, Stuart. Um, one of the directors there, Jose Mourinho, was a guest at the uh, Inter game. And uh, when asked the director about whether um, Mourinho might be coming to Milan, he said, no, no, he's going to Manchester. Keep hearing that from every source, but an official one being uh, Manchester United, of course, not Manchester City. Who have, uh, already inked in Pep Guardiola. Hazard. Just a little cameo of how things haven't gone for him this season. Need to take it on and get to the byline. And he got past the first challenge. Zabaleta showed him the line. Just took too heavy a touch. It hasn't been the same spark about him, that change of pace that he had last year, that change of direction, able to go past people with ease. Just haven't seen it this year. Won so many individual awards for his uh, contribution to Chelsea winning the title. And indeed, the League Cup as well. As judged by Demichelis, colour off hard for the right to win the header and fairly enough although Diego Costa on the receiving end Cahill back on the pitch looks as though he's okay for the moment Harry Cahill now goes Mikel free kick and uh, Diego Costa as though got it bang in the face Maybe below the mask Let's see Gets hit on the back of the head, then the arm comes back down from Kolarov. Kolarov jumps early, Diego Costa doesn't jump for it. Not sure there was too much intent from Kolarov. But when you have had a facial injury, any sort of whack on it is going to hurt. William. As a William again. It's very dangerous from outside the penalty area. Ivanovic. Okay, he looks okay. Aspilicueta. That's uh, Revamp match the city side of through what can be a testing early spell in the game. In the position trying to exploit any lack of cohesion. Certainly got a good shape about their defending so far, Man City. When you're looking at Chelsea's options, passing options, don't seem too great at times. Certainly not forward passes. And it's Pedro. It goes again. And hits the post. They suddenly look vulnerable then. Pedro, they've got a couple of goals here against Newcastle. In the last match on this ground, pumping Chelsea win. Mikel. Fabregas. Spun in by Aram, and I'm not sure he was looking to get it on target, but it was... The ball that needed smothering away by Caballero. Well, this is a chance made out of Barcelona here. Square one, two. Fabregas playing it back into the path of Pedro. Does everything right. It's a good first touch. Just tries to lift it over the goalkeeper. Good play from the white man. Fabregas with the corner. Caballero with the catch. Here it is again, the square one to Fabregas looking one way, then reversing it back into... Oh, the air actually slipped over as he went to close the ball down. 
inside, he gets that touch and then just tries to wrap his left foot round it. He must have thought the goalkeeper that when it went past him it was going to end up in the back of the net. Just caught on the lower part of the inside of the foot from Pedro, which he wasn't in total control of the final output. But a sign that Pedro is beginning to settle in at Chelsea. He worked really hard against PSG in midweek. He and Fabregas almost uh, inseparable off the pitch as well. It's uh, a friendship that, of course, brings, uh, brings its harmony on the pitch as we saw just then. He wants to go out in some style, but maybe the FA Cup, using the word uh, priority or lack of it in this case. And you wouldn't say, I mean, Kiev away is a, it's a tough trip. But not necessarily the hardest draw to get at this stage of the Champions League. You're absolutely right. That's the combination of games with the League Cup final. Against Liverpool next week, next Sunday. He has got injured players. But, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, of course, who was here at Chelsea for a while. He surfaced in England at Manchester City, and uh, uh, he's got a bloody nose here. In that challenge of we're going to need another mask. Do you think? I think they've got plenty of them spare. Uh, they, they've all got one. They've, they've all got their, their numbers on them, so they must have a complete set for the squad. And Cahill's had to wear one in the past as well. So Parler was the player that. Went for the challenge. Okay, he's got to go off the field again. There's the first challenge. <laughs> Nothing that the centre forward does wrong there. It's just a good honest leap for the ball. And the uh, blood regulations very uh, strictly applied these days. And the medical men will say that's absolutely rightly so. Fabregas, and Costa could be here first. Andrew Bioyo defending, probably the most difficult uh, spell he's had in his very short, what, 16-minute first-team career, but he came out on the right side of it. And he was a bit unlucky because he won the first ball in the air, it then fell to Fabregas, who just played it straight in behind him. Costa was away from him, it almost looks as though he's going to get the better of Dimitrelis. With a good recovery run. Oh, Di Yo-Yo. That's a lovely touch from Azar. He's here again, He's given himself an angle for the shot. Nacho playing a bit deeper than Valpala. He can't get his side up the pitch, and here comes William. And uh, City grateful for that in the end. I think Pedro had made his run, then realised he was offside. There's the young centre back. Michalis comes across, wins the challenge there. And I think he's absolutely right, the referee. Ray Marin not to give the penalty. That's a good challenge. And then he just about wins the ball with that right foot, and Diego Costa was already going to ground before the contact was made. He's off balance here. He's actually just trying to step across the centre back. The yo -yo, and then he has a little look at the referee, Diego Costa. Flip ball from uh, Manu Garcia. It's working hard. David Fapala. There will be critics of Manchester City here, but there'll be the same critics who say, well, young players don't get enough chance in the game these days and, uh, all right only one of the uh, city players are either playing for the first time or starting a game in the first team for the first time only one is english Bioyo, who was also qualified for nigerian could still if you like make the choice of the land of his fathers but getting first team football here which if you don't get it at the ages of 17, 18 or 19. Maybe you'll never be ready for it if it ever comes later on. It's too much uh, under-21 football against other under-21 teams. It's a man's game, but you've got to be in a first team. 
to show you are a man. William. Green he's taken a gamble by playing with a young squad, but also playing with two up front, which you'd expect Chelsea to dominate midfield. Diego Costa trying to match the city supporters, as you might gather from the reaction from that part of the stadium, the crowd. Giving uh, Diego Costa a bit of jet, but he's uh, quite used to that. That's the kind of player that uh, you'd call provocative. I think he'd be disappointed if he wasn't getting a bit of stick <laughs> of the away fans. Ivanovic, who has three FA Cup winners' medals, has had a spell of real domination in this competition. But they did lose uh, one of the great shocks of last season here to Bradford City in the fourth round. After being 2 0 up, they were beaten 4 2. Was uh, the end of a run of 27 FA Cup ties at Stamford Bridge without defeat prior to that. One here this season already against the Scunthorpe United. William, I guess, waiting on the edge of the area. Trying to squeeze it through for Azar. Oh, Man City, as they do, and they've got their first choice back four out. As soon as Fabregas took his touch back, but they squeezed up, tried to play offside. Chelsea's front players had to get back onside before Fabregas played the ball forward. It was just too heavy. On that occasion, it was good defending by Man City. And by Azar. Mario did well, and then Garcia stopping Chelsea getting forward. They only played once these two clubs in the FA Cup here at Stamford Bridge. And it was the season after Chelsea had won the Cup for the first time, they were the holders. And, uh, it was 1970-71 in the fourth round, City won 3-0, two goals from that great midfield player of his time, Colin Bell. One from Ian Bowyer, not really remembered as a Manchester City player, but more with Nottingham Forest. And of course, he won the league and the European Cup. Fabregas. Zabaleta's header was a bit of a stray one, but it was collected by Selina. Mikel. Pala, here's Manu Garcia. Now Kolarov, plenty forward for City. Oh, the clash, isn't there, between the goalkeeper's kit and City's strip as well? Yeah, it certainly is. Wasn't a good ball by Kolarov in the end. Such a good left foot when he breaks forward. He was just trying to pass that in behind the back four of Chelsea. Azar. William. Alex Garcia from the challenge, so they found Aspilicueta. Pedro. Fabregas. This time it was Pedro to Fabregas to the shot, and Caballero touched it gratefully. He found a lot of space here, Fabregas. He's one of the holding midfield players, but found that bit of space in behind Diego Costa. Just the movement of Diego Costa in the chalice couldn't close the ball down. Diego eventually went to try and do it. There's Garcia. More comfortable with his right foot, Willy Caballero. Challenged by Zabaleta. by Babaram and he's fouled in the end. It's a wonderful cross over the ball, isn't he? Babaram, we saw that against PSG, that cross he delivered on Diego Costa, where he should have scored in the first half. That's where he loves to be, high and wide up on this left-hand side. The thing with Chelsea getting back here today is that they were OK about even a defeat, that there's a real chance of 
taking up the ground and more in the, uh, the second leg. Been very tight. It's the third year in a row that Chelsea have played Paris Saint Germain, and the third time in four seasons they played Manchester City in the FA Cup. Here's Azza. William. Quetta is a decoy. It's too long for Pedro. Well read by Caballero coming out of pace. Now the front players aren't the ones that need to make the forward runs. It needs a midfield player running from slightly deeper. Man City have done it all season. Watch how they squeeze up here. They start to squeeze. Oh, it's a tight one. Oh, the OEO, I thought, was level with Pedro. That's a big gamble. Playing such a high line when the players are running across the field with the ball. He needs a good run from a midfield player, and they'll be in for Chelsea. High foot from uh, Fernando. Nothing uh, sinister or malicious, but free kick to Chelsea, which will keep it to close order. Fabregas. Mikel. Azar. Between two, it comes to Bavaram. He's got a chance to show this crossing ability now. Ooh, was, uh, not so much the direction, but the fact it came on the bounce to Caballero that caused the problem. Does he try and catch this or does he just try and shovel it away in the end? There it, is. it just bounces in front of him. Well, I think he just tries to shovel it away. Strange technique used by Caballero. Clubs have uh, only met once in the league this season. That was very early on in Manchester. City won a to canter 3-0. Not too much for Joe Hart to do in that game. But it was uh, maybe the first sign, Stuart, that all was not going to be well for Jose Mourinho in the defence of the title. Well, I think it was also the time where he took off John Terry, wasn't it, at half-time? Were being asked about that. He definitely wasn't injured. Certainly scheduled to come here in the middle of April for the return game in the league, and I would uh, venture to suggest that there won't be too many of this team starting. Mind you, if they win here, it would be a different view. It's nil nil. And if, uh, one or two awkward moments, Pedro's hit the post. He is again. Azza. Pedro. There go Costa. Maleta, who uh, just got it over. Navarraman and out of uh, immediate harm's way. And good pressing by Manu Garcia. And the young players have done well defensively. William. Nicely worked to Azar. Goes beyond Zabaleta and lines up across here. No one far post. And Kolarov shows that he is one of the more experienced members of the side. Very coolly done. Really, Chelsea didn't have enough players in the box. Diego Costa made the run to the near post. Isn't too much else on. Well, has out. He's got that left foot crossing. And two Garcias with her into play. Oh, 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 oh. out by Courtois. He's trying to build from the back. More than a ripple of applause for that, the home goalkeeper. William. Bellaqueta darted into that little pocket of space. Fabregas. Azar. Fabregas. Diego Costa. A little bit uh, slow ball sometimes from Chelsea and City able to reposition. But Fabregas still in the conductor's baton. Need 
mighty cross from Pedro. Kept in by Azar. Out for Amaraman. He sees the movement here. Pedro, who won't have seen the flag, but it's up. There you see it again, Man City. As soon as Chelsea start to pass backwards or square, they squeeze up. It's been their Achilles heel at times this season. And they do it right, it's OK, but Pedro again, I think he's... It's a very tight decision. He's onside, isn't he? I level. think he is. He's level the previous time. I think we've learnt from many years of experience, the angles even of our cameras sometimes distort the actuality of it all, but what um, we were able to see on our screens and your screens then, the, the kind of one the attacker should get the benefit from. As he should have done a little while ago as well. But it's a risky ploy to hold that line. If Chelsea have got time on the ball and players make little runs. Nara Bioyo is the player that was in line, but it's not his fault. Other players are squeezing up far too quickly. Don't need to squeeze up in those areas, just defend it properly. That's up. And they've got a foot in. It's in the letter in the challenge. Nice change of direction by Manu Garcia. Alex Garcia. Dimichelis. He's going to have a happy Garcia, of course, Manchester City as well. But just as well, he's moved on. With the identification here, I'm sure you're learning these players with every pass, every touch of the ball, and they certainly haven't let their club down so far. Manchester City. Fernando. Nicely worked to Zabaleta. Well, it wasn't the worst ball forward. Impala maybe didn't quite see it coming, maybe he couldn't have got there. Zabaleta looking a bit quizzical in that direction. Well, when the ball came out to Zabaleta, we're right behind him here. That was the ball to play. Now Parler didn't see it early enough. Cahill was not somebody who tries to squeeze up, he was running back. He... Now Parler was in between the two centre-backs, it was the perfect delivery by Zabaleta. Willian. Ooh. That was a very noble attempt by Pedro, who hasn't given up yet. He was claiming he was fouled, Cholera for saying Pedro handled it. Andre Mariner said uh, get on with it he does well just to keep the ball in play here gets up quickly and Kolarov just tries to shield the ball and he actually runs beyond it but it is handball from Pedro as well that's the poor side of Kolarov we know he can get forward deliver great crosses excellent footballer but I'm not always convinced by his defensive qualities it was the inside of Kolarov and that spent not danger to Manchester City Papala, Ichinacho, and it sits with uh, plenty of optimism. The score in that defeat by Tottenham came on as a substitute in the last uh, Premier League game for City. Papala doing well again, he runs down one side of Ivanovic, then cuts back across him. Ichinacho just has to hold his run here, nothing else on his mind but get his shot away. Strikes it nicely but always rising. Incidentally, the draw for the quarter-finals takes place shortly after the end of this tie. There's another fifth-round match tomorrow between Shrewsbury and Manchester United. Mikel. Another Raman. Hazard, now William. In his mind to head it wide again. Again, Zabaleta gets in a block. And again. They'll put the curse on Abaraman. That's three crosses he's now played into Zabaleta, the first defender. Good to see Zabaleta fully fit again. He's been such a good player for Manchester City over recent seasons. 
Just as well he's fully fit again for them because Bakary Sanyo took his place very capably. FA Cup winner with Arsenal, of course. I think it was his last ever game for Arsenal. In the FA Cup in 2014. But he's been uh, on the casualty list as well. Jesus Navas. Everyone that's out, they've come here without Yaya Toure and David Silva and Sergio Aguero. Company is on the bench. Azar. Fabregas. In by Hazar. 1 0. A straightforward header by the man in the mask, Diego Costa. Patient play and a little too crafty for Manchester City. Chelsea lead. Well, it's a well worked goal by Chelsea. Diego Costa doing what he didn't do against PSG, heading it back across the goalkeeper. Certainly wasn't easy a header for him this time. Played the little ball in. Hazar makes the run beyond the ball. Zabaleta lets him run. Centre half doesn't see it quite early enough, but it's a great delivery back into the box. All that Hazard does is just help it back into the danger area. Not really pick out Diego Costa. Diego Costa gets a good position between Dimachelis and Kolarov. Neither see the run, or neither see Diego Costa, and a good header back past the goalkeeper. Well, he's now scored nine in a 12-game run, including today. And Husserdink must take a lot of credit for that. He was uh, smouldering and brooding under Jose Mourinho, and then he got caught up in battles that... Uh, he didn't need to fight. No, his aggressive style is a key part of his game. He's concentrated on getting into the right areas in more recent times. There's a good slide challenge. Is it here, Nacho? And City might be in for an equaliser here, and they've got it. Falpala forced it in for a debut goal. And uh, City's kids hit back straight away. Well, I was just about to say, Iheanacho, surely he's got to hit through the back of the ball and shoot himself. He decided to square it. Now, Parler wasn't going to get there first, but does ask Billy Quirter, could he have done better at the far post? There's good combination play. Ball round the corner, two front players linking up well there. I thought he's going to shoot for goal himself. That's Billy Quirter coming across. I'm not sure there's too much he can do. He's trying to kick through the ball. Now, Parler just blocks it. Blocks it into the net. 1 1. Thibaut Courtois just gets a slight touch on it. I think Aspili Quirta, when you see from that angle, may have been able to do better and kick it off for a corner rather than trying to kick it out. Well, that's a great response. The sort of expected scenario given the team selection, Chelsea working at it, getting a goal up, going on to get into the quarter finals. That We've gone through a lot of people's minds, here they go, they're on their way, they're going to win this in straightforward fashion against a team which is full of inexperienced players, but one of those novices has knocked in the equaliser. And if you are going to play with two up front, and I think Pellegrini's been brave with playing two up front, they have to combine, they have to understand each other's runs, and they certainly have there. Now, Parla played the first ball for Iheanacho, Iheanacho then plays it with the outside of the boot back into what he thought was going to be foul pilot's path but he gets the blocking with great determination good play from Manchester City William Cahill. Now Fabregas. Manchester City, incidentally, do have a, a dreadful record here. They've only won one of their last 17 visits. And they've got the offside right again. And that was Pedro once more just trying to sneak into a kind of area that's got him so many goals for Barcelona down the years. I think the assistant referee's got two wrong. Does he get this one right? Yes, he gets that one right. 
But again, it's a tight decision. I think it's a real gamble that Man City are taking by squeezing up so late. There's a coin handed to Andre Marinori. He went to find a coin. There is the. This after an incident yesterday, more than one incident yesterday involving uh, West Bromwich Albion and the, one of their own players getting struck. Chris Brunt struck by a coin thrown by disgruntled supporters after they've been knocked out by uh, Championship side Reading. The OEO doing well on that occasion. Doesn't look to have great quality on the ball, does he? The big centre half. Here's Pedro. He's also trying to re establish a lead here, which only lasted a, a couple of minutes. And they might be able to do it with Fabregas. Oh, it's a great save by Caballero from Pedro, who's a, a thorn in City's side, but hasn't been able to get the reward from it in these 40 minutes. What other way that you break down? Sorry, Martin. The other way you break down a team that wants to squeeze up is to play little one-twos, and that's exactly what Chelsea are doing at the moment. Watch again. They squeeze up. They squeeze up. The one-twos played. And it's a good chance, but the error. It's the right height for him. Hazard just reversing it back into Fabregas, looking for Pedro again. Good save from that man, but it's the right height for him. It's probably about the only place he could have saved it, really. Need to put it across as uh, Diego Costa did. 2 1, but here is Hazard trying again, cut out on the slide by Kolarov. Hill with the header. And City can break here. Ian Atcher's just got a hold to stay on side. Selena. Nacho on that far side puts his hands out to the other centre forward. Foul Parlat saying you should have passed me the ball, but you're absolutely right. He was offside by two or three yards. Alex Garcia. Fernando. And of course, we're looking at what, uh, City fourth against Chelsea, twelfth in the Premier League. Um, but uh, City very much cast in the role of underdogs here because of their team selection. So I think we're entitled to say, Stuart, the FA Cup throwing up a bit of a surprise with that equaliser from Fapala. Well, I think the Chelsea fans, the Chelsea players, just felt as though they score that first goal and then it would be quite comfortable for them. Some of these Manchester City youngsters are very good players. I've seen them at Champions League, league youth level. Here comes Chelsea again, Pedro. Well, he's made the chance for himself with some nifty shifting of the ball. And he can't get the goal that he's threatened to get. It's been elusive so far. It's inside Zabaleta, centre half in the right position. But over the last couple of three weeks, he's looked back to somewhere near the sort of form we saw him in at Barcelona. William with the corner, a couple of minutes to go to half time. Palma doing his defensive work at the near post. Pavarachman. Aspilicueta. Into Mikel. And it comes to William, they've got men over here, Chelsea. But William's taking it back into some traffic. Eddie Nacho had a chance just to take it away then, but was a little slow to react. He's closing down, Mikel, who gets the better of him. Now William. Big, uh, couple of minutes here, ahead in the game, you feel. Chelsea are looking stronger again, has that gone out? No. He just kept it in with the outside of that right boot. He's having a good game, Pedro. Zabaleta diving in. Chelsea raising their game, having conceded the surprise equaliser. William Didn't quite have enough bend on it, but he's been striking from that kind of distance with the free kicks in particular, but also in open play too. 
Just change the direction, change the pace. Fernando can't get there. He was a counter-attacking threat against PSG. Different sort of game he's going to have to play here. As Man City are dropping deep in general play, and then they just try and squeeze up when they get to the penalty box. Manis Garcia, Manu Garcia. Fouled by Ravan, who got there quickly, but... The, the man as well as the ball. Kolarov. Well, he started very well, David Falpala, and he's uh, certainly contributed to the, his first half of first team football. A couple of minutes. Mike Jones, the fourth official, holding the board aloft. Fernando. Seen too much of Man City's wide men so far. And Garcia. Selena out on that far side. Fabregas. Dropped by Costa to Aspilicueta. Case for offside there with Costa just coming back into that position, but flag stayed down. Dina Chalis. Just telling the assistant referee that Diego Costa was offside by a couple of yards. In goes Ivanovic. It's Kolarov who got there. And again. Back. Espelicueta. Derek Cahill upfield. City with Caballero recognizing the chance to counter attack here. Uh, Ivanovic, a bit of covering. You see Cahill striding back. He's still not properly in position yet. And he needs to be now. And, uh, trying to tee it up on the edge of the area. William. And that's a disappointing end from Selena. He might have pulled the trigger with his right foot there. Here comes Pedro, not wanting this half to end without his name on the score sheet. Hazard. Rado Bio has, uh, Bio -Yo has done really well in uh, those kind of bread and butter situations, and he's learning on the job, isn't he, Stuart? He's having to. I'm not sure that Man City's U side squeeze up quite so much when the ball's played back or from crosses. No time to take the set play. Much to his frustration. Well, it's been uh, the first half of the strong, experienced Chelsea side. With uh, Diego Costa giving them what probably most of you expected to be a lead. But they didn't hold it for very long because uh, David Falpala on his debut equalised for this much-changed match to the City side. It's 1-1 at half-time. Welcome back to Stamford Bridge, where the unexpected is unfolding a little bit in the sense that Manchester City, with a team mixing some uh, defensive regulars and some teenagers like David Faupala, are holding pretty much full strength Chelsea side, just the John Terry and Zuma, the two regular centre backs for the last couple of months. Both uh, missing. And for all some Stuart, some quite neat approach play from the Blues. Stamford Bridge hasn't quite uh, seen what the majority want to see, which is uh, an emphatic performance against a much more inexperienced uh, eleven. I think if 
Man City try and hold the edge of their penalty box. Don't go any deeper. The square one twos, I think Chelsea will get in. By that means, they might just poke little balls in behind. Chelsea have now seen how Man City are going to defend. If they're good enough, they can break them down. But we've also seen a lot from Man City going forward, particularly the front two have linked up well with each other. Now, Parler has been excellent. So Chelsea at 1-1, uh, as they were in Paris on Tuesday at half-time. Collides right on half-time, a rare goal from Mikel. Only is six in over 350 games for the club. He had to rectify his mistake, didn't he? In Paris gave the free kick away, then turned his back on the free kick and the shot deflected off him. But a good response from the midfield player. Fabregas has picked out his passes well in this game. Down by Giannaccio. Back by Cahill, who obviously wouldn't wish his teammates any harm, but it suited his personal needs. He was sort of confined to sporadic appearances and being on the bench for the majority of the games. And this, as we move into 2016 and the European Championships, he's a regular member of England's team, let alone England's squad. It was not a, a good omen for him for what lies ahead, but now he's... Back in the groove, I'm sure the England manager Roy Hodgson is plotting what he is doing. And, uh, a step forward in the FA Cup would also help as well, but they've got to work hard to get that. So they do have the options of bringing players like Raheem Sterling and Vinnie Company on. Interesting to see whether they're here just to make up the numbers or whether they're here to help City turn. It's been a surprisingly good first half performance given their choice of players into a winning performance. Here's William. Has up. Costa coming in from the left hand side, but it's played in to William who tucks it away. And he contributes again, Chelsea's player of the season so far. In the third minute of the second half, Chelsea restored their lead. Stuart Robson. Well, William has been a great counter-attacking threat throughout the season. It's about the first time in the game there has been space for him to run with the ball. But we've been talking about Manchester City holding the line at the edge of their box. And they do it again here. And it's far too easy for William to pick his run and Hazard to pick his pass. There's nothing too problematic about this situation at the moment. And then they hold the line. Di Michalis doesn't go with the runner. William times his run perfectly. He's level with Di Michalis and a good finish into that far post. It's an easy pass for Hazard as well. And an assured, accomplished finish from the Brazilian who's really become the pin-up boy this season. He was assisting Hazard last season. It's been the other way around this time. And he's... Uh, Possibly going to steal the show again for Chelsea. And it's not just this back four that have got it wrong for Man City. All season, this has been their Achilles heel. Not sure why they try and play it. Don't go back into their box, they don't go with runners. Time after time this season, those sort of goals have been happening against Man City. And in the Premier League alone, they've had five different central defensive combinations and of course part of that is down to company who uh, was on the losing side in the Premier League game that he started for the first time against Spurs in the last game and City have had those two defeats uh, trailing again this time in the FA Cup Baba Rama. Costa. Diego Costa again. Now Pedro for Diego Costa. Oh, and it's a iffy challenge 
from uh, Alice Garcia. Well, I don't think there was any contact, and I think Pedro knew that he was stumbling over. I don't think he was trying to win a penalty. I think he anticipated the tackle. And this is the combination that got City back into it, but uh, Paolo has been penalised this time, having gone on to Ian Nacho's pass. There you see the difference. Cahill goes with the runner. Here it is again. Pedro tries to nip in between, and there's certainly no contact whatsoever. I think he was anticipating the challenge. Here comes a young, another youngster, Barker. Another 19-year-old. Another debut, has played senior football, he's been on loan at Rotherham. In the, the second tier of the English game. And, uh, often plays wide on the left-hand side, we'll see where Pellegrini is going to place him. Azar. Mr. Claiming he was blocked off off the ball. Chelsea can still go here from Amarama's cross. Pedro. That's a good piece of defending from uh, Martin Dimichelis. That time, Dimichelis does go with the run. He's late in seeing it, but eventually he gets there. And good job he did. William with the corner. first to it again and Fabregas is onside it's a great angle for the cross it's really hung up towards Zabaleta can just get a glancing touch that's hammered in by Gary Cahill and surely Chelsea are now in the quarterfinals they've started the second half strongly and it just fell kindly to a, a centre-back who has an eye for goal, and he's shown it again here. Well, he hasn't got bad technique either. Goes through the goalkeeper, Caballero. Oh, whatever was said at half-time, Chelsea have come out, played at another level, and at a higher tempo. To start with, it's not particularly good play from Hazard. It doesn't pick anybody out, just crosses it aimly into the box. Clearance isn't good from Fernando. Maybe, maybe the goalkeeper should do better. Doesn't get his bottom hand down in time, but a good finish from Cahill. He certainly is a good technician for a centre-half. It's right through the back of the ball. Just too much pace for the goalkeeper. And now they're heading for the last eight. And maybe Huss heading, heading for a, a repeat performance in the FA Cup. From his first spell. It will be uh, from the annals of uh, FA Cup history, I think, or recording in the annals of FA Cup history, if they uh, do come back from this Manchester City. Barker is on, incidentally, for Selina. He was getting ready at 2-1, he came on at 3-1. Fernando. Absolutely right, he's an outside left who loves to run with the ball, he's got plenty of pace. And he uh, does well here to take uh, Aspilicueta for the run and get a corner from it. Well, when Patrick Vieira was manager of the under-18s, uh, Selena, who's just gone off, didn't really involve himself in the game. But that man Barker, he used to just play as an outside left, didn't come in field. Just stayed in that outside left position. They kept switching the play to him, and he's got pace and trickery to cause problems. Well, he's got problems now. Here's Manu Garcia, though, for Ignacio. And the Fapala with half a chance of getting another goal, but here's Barker. Kolarov supporting on the outside. Away with some difficulty by Mikel.
Barker again. Fernando. Manu Garcia. Here's Barker. A chance to go at Chelsea and involve Kolarov. Comes storming in. It's a terrific collision with the Gary Cahill's challenge. No quarter asked or given by two experienced players. And a couple of really good passes by Barker. Twice Kolarov has got in behind. Cahill pleased with his challenge as he came across. Well, I would estimate that we're seeing the last FA Cup tie involving Manuel Pellegrini as manager of Manchester City. Ten minutes gone in the second half. It's time for redress, but even the introduction of another young player as a substitute Suggest that uh, Chelsea and their owner are going to be able to uh, control proceedings from here on in. But they were 2 0 up against Bradford City, and suddenly the roof fell in. He's hitting steady the ship last time he came in at Chelsea and won the FA Cup. Can, they, can he repeat it this season? He got to the semi-final of the Champions League as well, which he has never forgotten, because they were within a minute of beating Barcelona. And, uh, Iniesta got a contentious equaliser on a night when Chelsea felt they were denied a couple of penalties. It's a painful memory for Luis Hiddink. They've got a chance of into the quarter-finals in that competition as well if they can turn that 2-1 deficit from Tuesday around here what a difference a few months make he was in charge of the Dutch national team for the first part of the qualifiers the tournament they failed to get through and all the way here they're trying to it was Pedro Aspilicueta William Pedro and Dimichelis they are asking for offside, they weren't going to get it, it was another chance for Chelsea. I just don't understand their policy. It's not the players, it's the philosophy that the coach uses, the manager uses. Don't go back into your box. Pedro's been excellent with his movement. Just needs to get on the score sheet, really. In by Willian. Cahill and Ivanovic, the main two aerial threats. It's getting in each other's way. Well, he started off in the wars, didn't he? A whack to the thigh, a bloodied nose. Well, he scored a very good goal. Just made an excellent block against Kolarov up the other end. And, uh, bread and butter defensive header. For Gary Cahill. Diego Costa able to turn. Didn't quite. Uh, Step Hazard in. It's still amazing that Aiden Hazard, I know he's had some spells out of favour and out of the side with an injury or two, but just the one goal of penalty in the last round of the FA Cup against MK Dons. His only goal since he actually failed and scored from the rebound with a penalty to win the league here against Crystal Palace in May last year. No question about it, it's a foul from Fabregas. Garcia. And this is a back heel by Aspilicueta. Maybe time for a flick and a trick or two for Chelsea. And, uh, Barker trying to get into his stride. We were just about to see the pace of Barker there. If he'd have taken a better touch in behind Cahill. Cahill may have been embarrassed by the youngster. Hit the question mark against Barker. Has he got an end product? Diego Costa. Cahill. 
Well, it's been a great first quarter now of the second half for Chelsea. And they lost their initial lead. To Van Pala's equaliser. And from William and Cahill. And, uh, push them to uh, a position of real promise here to claim a place in the last eight, the draw of which comes up after this game is finished. William. Fabregas. Mikel. Everything at top tempo, Pedro. It's a clever pass for Fabregas's run, though. That friendship I talked about in the first half is very evident on the field, Stuart, isn't it, as well? It's almost the first ball he looks for to see where Cesc is. It certainly has been today, hasn't it? Those two have really combined well. Been a couple of lovely one-twos. Good movement from both players. The player on the ball has had the awareness to find them. Aspilicueta. Mikel, who had his career taken a different turn, might have been based in Manchester. He put pen to paper with Manchester United. But, uh, the deal was questioned from uh, his side, and in the end, Chelsea actually had to buy him from Old Trafford, then never played for United. Fabregas, William. Bioyo really, uh, thinking what am I learning from this about the way to step up and not because well, he's very much the junior member of a, what otherwise a very senior back four now comes a uh, Nacho, Barker trying to run in behind. Nacho had the eye on the reverse pass towards uh, Papala. Here's Kolarov. Still be interesting if City were to get the next goal. Ruffle Chelsea's feathers again. I still think there's enough quality in this Manchester City side. Should they get another goal? To press and create a couple of chances. Another example of the centre back, the young centre back, not particularly good on the ball. Diego Costa, Hazard. Now Fabregas, a touch and hit, two touches and hit. And he was reaching for it, the second touch wasn't quite the setup for the shot that he probably could have created. There's another example. It's not a bad pass from Edin Hazard at the end of it, a good pass. But when the ball first went to him on the counter, he slowed it down, he allowed Zabaleta to create a 2v1 against him. Last season, 1v1 against the centre-back, he'd have gone at him and got his shot away. The only time Chelsea have beaten Manchester City in the FA Cup it was 101 years ago yesterday. He went on to the final back in 1915. Didn't win it until 1970. Fionaccio. Chance for handball from the City fans and from the player concerned. Those that are old enough to remember that cup final against Leeds were known as one of the dirtiest <laughs> cup finals. Went to a replay at Old Trafford. Leeds really were the power in the land then, and uh, Chelsea were the underdogs, but having uh, got the worst end of a 2-2 draw, they made the most of the replay. And a 2-1 win, David Webb later managed Chelsea. He won't remember that, Raheem Sterling. A long, long time before he was born. Uh, the rumour mill has it, and you can't find anyone here at Chelsea to substantiate it, that he was a trialist as Chelsea as a... Very young boy. Here's a hazard. Being a trial to Manchester City here. Dimitrelis having to come out to mow him down and accept the yellow card, which was inevitable. Hazard going past Dimitrelis. It's a good run from Diego Costa. 
could have played him in. But this time he uses the run to go the other way. And the Chalice going with his wrong leg. Ball was past him. Free kick in a very good position. He mentioned Willian. But it looks as though Hazard may be taking this one. To get his first goal at Stamford Bridge this season. Maybe. It's a great position Chelsea are in, 25 minutes to go, 3-1 up. An inexperienced team beginning to creak and the uh, older players beginning to look like what have we been <laughs> let into here. So, it is the still young Belgian. And to brighten up his own personal campaign and he's done it. That will mean a lot. Not just to the scorer, but to his teammates as well. Just hitting with that uh, white coat on now. I've been asked by the uh, referee to put that on because he looked like the fourth official. Well, that looked like the real Eden Hazard. Certainly did. It's a clever free kick as well. Caballero doesn't cover himself in glory again. He starts to go behind the wall before the ball's played. Moving across. Hazard just passes it. Three Chelsea players in that wall, may just move out the way. Caballero can't see it, but he can't start wandering across the goal before the ball's played. There's no way he's going to get back. There you see it. Great free kick. But the goalkeeper's side of the goal. Poor goalkeeping. And I don't think he's put in a good performance at all, Caballero. And that will do Edin Hazard the world of good. So the FA Cup has been fruitful for him. One in the 5-1 uh, win against the MK Dons. They're on the way to another five here, perhaps not just five at MK Dons, but five here against Newcastle in the last uh, Premier League game on this ground. Caught guessing, I would say, the goalkeeper. Confirmation of that yellow card in the conceding of the free kick by Martin Dimichelis. This could get pretty embarrassing for Manchester City and for Manuel Pellegrini. It's all well and good saying uh, we've got other priorities, but most fixture congestions than uh, the one facing City have been uh, dealt with by a group of senior players. It was a big call from him. Well, he's got to win. He's got to do well in Kiev, and he's got to win the uh, Capital One Cup to justify this. You would feel there's every chance, of course, of being able to do that. So, uh, Unless City can make a bit of inroads into the damage cause, and Zavaleta makes some inroads here, and they might get one back. Iki Nacho with a back heel. He's uh, done that trick before. And there was plenty of power on the uh, technique, but he couldn't force it across the line. First time we've really seen Zabaleta get forward. He's been able to get forward that often. He does really well. He doesn't get his first touch right. He certainly does get enough power in it. And once again, Cahill in the right place. A lot of space in at that far post. Who gets the block in? Probably Coutinho would have made the save in behind him. And probably Iki Nacho could have set up Manu Garcia with a more conventional chance. Diego Costa probably a bit annoyed inside because there might be some more goals for the taking in these circumstances. But he's uh, got his one. It was the. Uh, Opener of the afternoon. Similar chance to the one he had against PSG, where the goalkeeper made a save, where he headed it straight at him. That was a good header. He knew that Caballero was going to run across the field. And there is a player that I thought was outstanding today, Pedro. What a good performance he put in, particularly in the first half. And it allows, uh, allows Oscar to get some action, and Bertrand Traore as well. Ira scored at MK Dons, and Oscar got a hat-trick there in the first half. He's only got uh, 20 minutes of the second half this time. But, uh, he will increase the appetite, I'm sure, from the, uh, the players who've just been brought on to not just let uh, Manchester City see this out. And 4-1 is bad enough, isn't it? They'll be wanting to get a piece of the action as well. 
the two new arrivals. Harry comes from Burkina Faso. An interesting transfer of work permits awaiting, and how long before he could uh, be allowed to play in this country. And that's been sorted out now. Here's uh, Alex Kolarov. Azar. Now by Fernando. Barker. Now Parler. Oh, there's a chance to get Barker in then. Wrong angle and the wrong weight on the pass. Barker made a good run. And here come Chelsea again. Oscar. William to the left. Oscar wants a bit of personal glory and he wasn't far away from getting it. He's sitting, uh, chomping at the bit really to get on and be a part of it. He had a look at all the options. He looked right, he looked left. Came back inside. Garcia, trying to wrap his foot round it, bend it into that far corner. Doesn't come round in time. It goes Ivanovic, on by Hazard. Oscar is going to play in his favoured position. Just in behind the main striker, Traore. Another knock for mm. Cahill. A bit of gain, but even more pain. As you said, it's great for England that he's getting some more time out on the pitch. Gets a whack in the face from Iheanacho, or on the side of the head. Not sure that's too much intent from the big centre forward. He's jumping for the ball there, and as he's swinging round, just catches Cahill. Yeah, there are those who could do that with a bit of intent, but I don't think a, a young forward like Kelechi Nacho is in that category, and I hope he never becomes that. I think he'd lost his balance. He started mm. to jump forwards, and as he started to swing round, just had to try and keep his balance and lift his arm up. It's something that can come uh, born of frustration from forward to... You know, that, uh, in the wrong team, really. Sure. Envious at the chances being created at the other end. He's got a, a bright future. He's already scored nine times this season. That's some important goals as well for Manchester City. Here's Fabregas. Oscar. Fabregas. Mikel, the keep ball from Chelsea, but trying to do it in the city's half of the pitch. Michalis reading it. Barker has only presented it to Hazard, who had the mind of the young winger. William. Chalice has been penalised, it's a penalty, and he could get a second yellow here. Andre Mariner has pointed to the spot, more pain for Manchester City. I think he has to see the run earlier, and then he gets the other side of Traore. He's always the wrong side, he gives him a nudge in the back, Traore goes down. And referee Andre Mariner saying that it's the official on that far side that told him that it was a free kick or a penalty and a chance for Oscar the substitute to get on the score sheet yeah, Oscar ahead of Hazard well, eager to uh, get some of the spoils here the Chelsea substitutes and here goes Oscar and Caballero keeps it out went the right way it's pretty academic to the result, but a wasted opportunity for Chelsea. Sometimes the delay allows the goalkeeper just to get that little bit further with his dive, but it's not a good penalty from Oscar. And it's not his first penalty failure of the season either. It stays at 4-1.
Quite often the delay, somebody that's taking the kick, is to see where the goalkeeper's going to go, but it didn't seem to change his mind, Oscar. Saw where Caballero was going to dive, and continued to play into that corner. Well, that's uh, Hazard trying again. And it's not going to be as costly for Oscar as it was for Charlie Daniels with Bournemouth yesterday. Could have put them one up and they lost 2-0 at home to Everton. Chelsea could be in again. How many times do you see that square one two? Or how many times have we seen it today? Here it comes again. Traore plays him in. He didn't play him in. Fabregas played it square, made the run. His collar off. And away, only as far as Managusia by Ivanovic. Garcia has the shot. Oscar tells you prepared to take one or two risks at the back. Barker. Manish Garcia. Marker again. Fernando, and it's offside. Not always easy to call those right in front of the assistant. Ampala. He got his shot away a little bit earlier here. And it came out, hit it first time. And then he took his touch past the challenge and got his shot away. And it's Fernando who comes off, and the average age of the Side drops even further as uh, Cameron Humphreys comes on for his second first team appearance. He was used as a substitute in very different circumstances at Aston Villa when they were 4 0 up. To the uh, penalty would have become on when they're four goals adrift. Cahill. There are going to be questions asked, aren't there, Stuart, of Manuel Pellegrini? Particularly if in this last, it would be 15 minutes or so, with added time, won't it? Chelsea strike again. Well, everybody will be asking about his team selection, quite rightly so. But all season, I've been asking about his policy of defending that penalty box. I've seen it time and time again. He must see that it's not been working for them. Too many times they've been cut open by the opposition, even though they've got much better players in general than the opponents that they're playing against and it keeps costing them goals he has to revisit his philosophy and try change it defensively Otamendi is one we haven't mentioned who uh, was fit for selection today Mangala has been missing through injury and now there's uh, another stoppage for an injury I'm not sure it will be too much of a problem for Manu Garcia. It's the bony elbow from Mikel. I think he's just protecting himself, Mikel, as you have to do when you're jumping for the balls. That's why you lift your arm so that you don't get a whack on the head. He said it was an elbow. Yeah, you're wrong. His elbow did catch it. Looks as though Dimichelis has gone into midfield and Humphreys has gone into the centre back position. Here's Cahill. Nice footwork by Manu Garcia, who's uh, keeping going. Uh, managers do learn a lot about their players in adversity. And, uh, he's not a happy boss here, not happy with the timing of the fixture. But, uh, was put back to the Sunday in a way with the selection. He's uh, made his discontent very plain. In uh, months to come, maybe we're looking back and saying, well, hang on, he, he was one of those lads who played at Chelsea. We've got some first-team uh, 
experience. Van Pala would come into that country. Manu Garcia is still going. Anish Garcia there as well. Another thing you have to think about the supporters that travel all the way down from Manchester to watch the game, support the team. Hazard. Well, I suppose some of them will be going to Kiev, maybe not too many of them. Some will be here in there. Much bigger numbers will be going to Wembley. And if they come out on the right end of those two results, this will be quickly forgotten. But, uh, here is Hazard. They're in again, Chelsea here. Traore against the post. Oscar trying to knock it in. A bit of fortune on Manchester City's side. And a couple of these Chelsea attacks with the penalty. And now that could be uh, a much more embarrassing score. And it's bad enough from their point of view at the moment. Here's Traore. Oscar, Abeleta, can't get it away, Fabregas. Right against the, the byline, and he wins the corner off, Humphreys. It's been the ideal game for Cesc Fabregas, he's been able to demonstrate his brilliant passing ability. There's another reverse pass into the run of Hazard. Romani Matic, who didn't play in Paris, and he was suspended in the totting up procedure of the yellow cards in the Champions League. Uh, Mikel has been a player that Chris Hiddink has turned to again. He's one of those who was here and helped to win the FA Cup back in 2009 and did very well under the current interim manager in his first spell in charge. And he's been preferred to Matic again today. They've made the change now. Here's William. Williams cross. Ivanovic is in there. And that's the sort of thing that he's done to plenty of opponents in the past, so you can hardly complain about that. Here's that chance again. Watch the pass here from Fabregas. Round the corner. Again, they're trying to hold a line on the edge of the penalty box. They're broken far too easily. Hazard just overhits it to Traore. He has to adjust his feet and stretch for it. Chelsea have played some wonderful football in this second half. Man City get lucky. Here's Oscar. They might not get lucky this time. Hazard. Couldn't find Oscar. The City did smell the danger that time. Nice Garcia. Tend to forget now that it was 1 1 at half time. And Chelsea imposed themselves very quickly in the second half. Well read. Uh, Yo Yo. That time didn't try and step up. Saw the ball was going to be played in behind and read it and dealt with it. Chelsea. Uh, A step closer to maybe keeping the FA Cup in London, of course, held by Arsenal for the last two seasons. And Arsenal themselves held by Hull City for the Championship yesterday. So a goalless draw at the Emirates. You would ask Stuart how that replay will pan out. It's not a replay that either club particularly want, and replays in this competition are a bit of a thorny issue at the moment. His collar off, no chance. Not being a replay in this one. Well, going back to that game, Hull won't pick a stronger side. In his press interview afterwards, Steve Bruce said, these players have deserved another chance, a bit like Klopp said. Hang on a minute, there's a mistake by Aspilicueta to give it to Ihia Nacho. And now uh, Barker. There's a part in uh, Chelsea, a bit more time. Barker again, and Aspilicueta again. Trying to give Oscar a chance to take that on the burst. I could block it in. Here's Azar, who's enjoyed another opportunity to get some miles on the clock in a confident Chelsea team. Of course, at the start of the season when everyone was looking at his shortfall, they weren't ignoring the shortfall of the collective. 
In the end, cost the Jose Mourinho his job. But, uh, lighter in mood now. Stronger in performance. Good play by William. Step over, trying to get down the outside of Zabaleta. Five minutes to go. Almost the city. Head home, where they'll drop off some of these players and then pick up some of the others and then go to Kiev. And there's this uh, round of 16 first leg against Dinamo. Parlour back. Helping out. It's only meant the fourth official when he was standing up in the technical area. Yeah. That's the only time it's. Uh... Steve Holland hasn't been asked to change his. No, he, well, he's probably not allowed to stand up. So. <laughs> Here's Matic. That's the, uh, the rule in the Premier League that only one standing. I'm sure the fourth officials will say it's one too many sometimes. <laughs> but here comes uh, Canetti here, Nacho. And they get uh, Parler into a dangerous position again. They've shown a good understanding from time to time. It's been a, a collision off the ball now. And uh, the referees, I think City go on, collar off. So Fabregas is in pain. And it was a complete accident. Now Parler slipped over and he slipped right into Fabregas. Collar off, has a good hit, that was going in. Courtois had very little to do. And he was ready for that one. Well, I thought that Collar off was going to bend it in behind the Chelsea back four, but he went with power. It's a good strike and a good save as well. Hasn't had too much to do, Thibaut Courtois. I think he's shown a great attitude, Collar off. He's been one of the better players for Man City. And they have a corner. Rabiogo is in there and uh, attacking it was Ivanovic. Oh, catching it, quite a low point was Courtois. He just turned his hands round at the last moment, didn't he? He was going to catch it above his head. Always a risk if you don't catch the ball at its highest point. Comfortable second half for the home side. They played some wonderful football, helped by I think, poor defending by Manchester City's back four, which includes three senior players who've been banging on about the, the youth elsewhere in the team, and a goalkeeper who's also been around a lot. Here's uh, Matic. Yeah, seems to be back in full working order. Back heel wasn't great for him. Moscow. Certainly my criticism wouldn't be so much of the players in that back four as the philosophy mm. and the style and whatever they're trying to do defensively. And they must work at it on the training field, but I think it's flawed. And in goes Hazard, and the ball's ended up. In the back of the net, Hazard wasn't needed in the end. Charoy gives it the thumbs up. And they do have five, Stuart. They certainly do. It's a cross, an in-swinging cross into the box. He's got a lot of work to do, and he just lets it skid off the top of his head. And he's had a disappointing game. Caballero, he thought that was going over the bar, but just crept in. Sets up the play. Oscar out on that far side, back onto his right foot, just whips the ball in. And I'm not even sure he's going for goal, I think he's just trying to flick that on. And it's going your way, it certainly does go your way. Hazard coming round the back, Caballero looks at it, maybe should do better again. Squeezes in at that far post. It's definitely Traore's goal, he scored in the fourth round at MK Dons, and he's got this one to his name as well. Just adds to um, what Manuel Pellegrini will have to deal with, I'm sure, from the assembled media at the final whistle. He'll 
stick to his guns, his priority. And it's uh, an even bigger week ahead because of this. And now, well, we've known for some time, Manchester City are going to lose for a third game in a row. 3-1 at home to Leicester, 2-1 at home to Tottenham. And here in the fifth round of the FA Cup, Chelsea have got five against a much-changed City unit. That's the right word, they haven't operated too often as a unit. But here's uh, Barker, he took that well. Well, shouts for handball against Gary Cahill, arms down by side. Were well, they on their way down to the side when the contact was made? That's what Barker can do. Talked about it before. That's how he plays with the U side. He almost stands on the touchline. They hit big diagonals to him. Great first touch. They want to break again, and they are going to break again. Hazard's got Oscar to work with here. Let's just put the brakes on the pass. And uh, City has spared a six. Still feel as though Hazard is lacking that little bit of confidence. That was a great opportunity, 2v1, he could run with it at pace. Just kill off the last defender, didn't do so. There's probably been the man of the match, Fabregas, in terms of his passing ability. I know he's not a good defender. I don't think he's a good defender, that was shown against PSG in midfield, but once he gets time on the ball, he gets in fear opposition, he can pick out his passes brilliantly. There's an old saying in football, you can only beat who's put in front of you. And Chelsea have done that, they've sorted it out in the second half in spectacular fashion. And in these dying seconds, they go for Manchester City again. William have got that crucial third goal of the afternoon, put them 2-1 in front. Followed by Cahill and Hazard's free kick and Traore's back header. Second half for Chelsea against City's second string, you might call it. Hazard hit a vintage free kick in the help yourself time in the second half. It was Cahill as well with a good finish up for a set piece. William Got it going in the second period. And Traore got in on the act as well. First half was 1 1, and uh, City had stuck at it with Papala getting a, a debut goal. But in the end, Chelsea robbed it. Chelsea 5, they're through the fifth round, Manchester City 1.